In a video I released previously, I used a portion of this old wool blanket that I found at a thrift store to turn it into this multifunctional haversack. Well, in this video, we're going to take another piece of this wool blanket and turn it into mittens. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get down to making the mittens, I just want to talk for a second about using wool blankets in projects like this. So if you haven't already watched my video where I turned a portion of the wool blanket into this haversack, I'd highly recommend that you go back and watch that video, and I'll put a link to it right up here in the corner. Reason being, and there's a lot of instruction in that video, which I'm not going to repeat in this video. Okay, that's one good reason to go back and watch it. Now, I just want to talk about the mittens for a second. So. In preparing for this video, I looked at a lot of other videos where people were using wool blankets or sweaters or fleece or other materials to make mittens. And one thing that struck me was none of the videos that I could see did a good job of showing how to turn or how to actually create a pattern. So it took me some time to decide what pattern I wanted to use for myself, then how to actually describe to you how to make that pattern. So that's what uh, I'm going to be doing in the next segment, is showing you how to make a pattern that you can turn any material, wool blanket or anything else, into a mitten. Okay, now let's get down to making the mittens. Okay, let's get started with the design of our pattern for the mitten. So this will be designed to fit your hand. And once you have this pattern down, you should be able to use it for any number of mittens for you. You'll just have to adjust it if you're going to be making mittens for somebody else. So what do you need to get started? Well, to start with, you need something to draw on. I would recommend you use something a little stiffer than paper. I'm going to be using a file folder uh, because that's what I had at hand. You could use paper, you could use construction paper, you could use cardboard, you can use just about anything for this portion of the design. The reason I'm using something stiffer just makes it a little easier when I lay the pattern down on the blanket that I can trace it around. You'll also need, obviously, a pair of scissors to cut it out and something to make marks on the paper with, either a pen or a sharpie. I find it helpful to have a straight edge. This is not so much for measuring it as it is for uh, drawing the straight edge on. And even though you could do this freehand, I'm going to use the pot lid to make a nice rounded at top of the mitten pattern. So let's get started. Designing of it, it took me a while to figure this out, but once I did, it is really not all that difficult. So you may want to refer back a few times to see how I'm doing it. And I just want to point out, this is only one design, the design that I have come up with for myself based on designs I've seen on, in other videos. I am sure, well, I know there are any number of designs that you could come up with for yourself. So uh, I'd encourage you to look around before you decide what you're going to do. Have a look at other videos and see what they're doing. And you may uh, like this design, you may like the other ones better. Okay, to start with, take your hand, lay it down on your surface that you're gonna be drawing on. Tuck your thumb into the side, not underneath, but just to the side comfortably. Take your marking implement, be it a pencil or a marker, and you're gonna make four marks. First one is gonna be about one inch above your finger. Second one, one inch to the outside of your hand. Third one, one inch to the outside of your thumb. And the last one, this is something you'll need to decide before you get started, is how long do you want to make the mitten? Let me push this forward so you can see. Uh, do you want it to be a long gauntlet that goes up over the sleeve of your coat? Do you want it to be short enough so it just meets the cuff of your coat? Or do you want it somewhere in between? I'm going to have it just above my wrist, and you'll see why later, but it's a very easy pattern to modify if you want to make the gauntlet style. So probably right where my cuff is right now, maybe a little longer. So it's a bit arbitrary. You, I'll tell you now, when you make these marks, you're better off making the mitten bigger than you think it's probably going to have to be so that if you necessary, you can make it smaller. You can cut off material. You can always make it a little smaller. What you can't do, though, is if you make it too small, you won't be able to make it larger afterwards. So if you have the luxury of room and enough blanket material, make your mitten a little bit bigger. All right, so we have those four marks. What comes next? So I'm going to take my straight edge, and I'm going to make a line, two lines, using those two outside marks down the paper. 
preciseness is not required for this. It's good if you have nice parallel lines. Then using my pot lid, I'm going to create a curvature right at the top, try to make it as centered as possible. You certainly can do this freehand if you don't have uh, something that happens to be a nice circle. I'm fortunate that I have, so that's what I'm going to use. So you can see at this point I have two lines, my half circle. Now all I need to do is make one more line at the bottom where it'll cut off at the wrist or just below, beyond the wrist. Okay, so here is the start of our pattern. At the end of our design, when we go to transfer this pattern onto the blanket, this will be the back portion, the thing that covers the back of your hand. But we're also going to be using this to design two inner pieces, one that'll split across the palm and go up the fingers, and the other one will split across, or the other piece will be down the palm and up the thumb. And you'll see as we go along. Okay, what I'm going to do now is cut this out and then I'll bring it back because we're going to use this as a template on another piece of cardboard to go to the next step. All right, let's move on to the next step. So you can see that I've cut out the back portion of the mitten. What I'm going to do before I go any further is just number this. Number one, just for later sake, you can tell which one's going to be the back, the front, but also just for ease of referencing the, pa the pieces of the pattern as we go along. So take piece number one, place it on top of another piece of cardboard or material. I know you can't see the, the difference yet, but uh, you will once I get this fully traced out. All right. So here we have another tracing of that very same pattern. Now what we're going to do this time is we're going to lay the, our hand down on the pa uh, pattern back right where it was when you made the first one. So what I mean by that is make sure you have an inch at the top, an inch on each side. And just try to line it up as well as you can. Now where the last time you had your thumb tucked, this time let your thumb relax and come out to the edge of the line, not further, but just out to the edge of the line. Take your pencil and we're going to make two marks. One will be one inch above your thumb and the other one is going to be right in the web of your hand. Just a dot there is all I need. So with the dot that went into the web of my hand, web meaning between my thumb and my palm, I'm going to make a straight line across the mitten. That's going to be a measuring point, as you'll see in a minute, for the next step of the pattern. Now, I'm going to draw my thumb on. So, this is, this is going to be freehand. I don't know any easier way to do this, so I hope it'll come out so that you can see it. Uh, it's not a precise thing. My only recommendation is, is that you make it wide enough that once it's sewn up, your thumb will be able to fit inside. So, let's try something like this. So as I bring the thumb down, I'm coming down to a point not quite halfway across the line. Go through the line. I'm going to dip down below, go over to the outside edge, try to aim for somewhere between three quarters and an inch below the edge of that line. So once again, hopefully I'll show you this so that you can see what I've drawn. There's my thumb. It drops down below the edge. Do you know, if I haven't mentioned it before, and I probably, well, I, I guess I know I should have, and that is, why am I allowing for one inch around all the dimensions of my hand, including my thumb? Well, for one very good reason, when you go to put this together, some of that one inch is going to be used up by sewing. It's called a seam allowance. Somewhere between a quarter and a half inch will be used up all the way around, including the thumb and all the other pieces where they meet together. You'd like to be able to keep that as close to the outside of the material as possible, but to be realistic, allow yourself a little bit of extra space for that sewing to take place. The other reason is you do want the mitt to be bigger than your hand. You don't want this to be tight. You want it to be a bit loose on your hand. We'll get it tighter at the wrist later and you'll see how. But for the design of the mitten, you want your fingers to be able to move inside. That's what allows your hand to stay warm, is the air that is trapped inside of the mitten. 
Plus, if you've de- you're going to if you decide you want to wear a liner glove, like a thin wool liner or a polypropylene liner glove, then you'll want enough room for that to be inside the mitten as well. So that's what I've done: is I've allowed one inch uh, uh, gross up or exaggeration all the way around the mitten for that sewing. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to measure the distance that I dropped this line below the the one that went straight across. And it turns out to be pretty much right on three quarters of an inch. I'm going to add that to the bottom of the mitten, three quarters of an inch. And you'll see why in a minute. Now, in addition, I have to create a seam allowance because when I go to sew the two palm pieces together, like I said, it's going to shrink that piece up. So I'm going to add another three quarters of an inch to the bottom for that seam allowance. It gives me just a little bit of flexibility in uh, how much I can sew. So yeah, let's do that. So what we need to do now is extend the line of the mitten down past those two points. Draw parallel lines across the bottom, three quarters of an inch, and a second one, three quarters of an inch. And I'll close that up over here. All right, so I have my thumb drawn in, additional three quarters of an inch and another additional three quarters of an inch that you'll see why that works out when we get to the next step. So what I'll do now is I'll cut out this lower portion and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have cut out that second portion and in fact I'm going to number that number two. So I have piece one and two and now we're going to create the top half of the inner part of our hand where the fingers and thumb. In order to do that I need to trace Number one, onto yet another piece of paper, cardboard, whatever it is you're using for me, file folder. I'll do that very quickly. Okay, so we have another one of those inverted U's. This will become piece number three. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take piece number two and we're going to lay it down on top of the mitten and we're going to line it up and trace around the thumb. Now, here's the thing. We want to line it up with this center of three lines. So this is where the original pattern stopped. This is the additional three quarters of an inch that I added that allowed, that accounted for the drop below the line and then the three quarters of an inch I added for the seam allowance. I want to use the center line and line it up across the very top of the mitten. For me, I find it just a little bit helpful if this is only going to be temporary because you're going to be cutting this off anyway. If I just place a reference line across the top so that when I lay the pattern down, I can line it up more precisely. Now, you may be asking yourself, does it matter? which way I lay it. Not for this portion of the project, it does not. You'll see why later, but all you're going to need to make both a right hand and a left hand mitten is just these three pieces. So what I'm going to do in fact is lay it down this way because that's where the lines are drawn. Line it up on that three quarter, first three quarter mark. Get it as close to the edge as I can, reasonably. And, all right, that looks pretty good. Trace it. So now I have the top half of my palm, but we include my fingers and the inside of my thumb. Now I'll cut this out and we'll be ready to go to the next step. Okay, so now our pattern is complete. We have our three pieces and all three of these pieces will produce produce the two mittens. Piece number one will be the back of the hand. We'll make two of those, two of number two, two of number three. Now let me quickly show you what this is gonna work like when we go to assemble it into a mitten. You can kind of get an idea from doing this. So let me lay piece number one out. Take piece number two, 
piece number three. I've kind of pre-bent them so that you can see how this is going to work. Hopefully you can see what I've done here. I've got the thumb sticking up right on there. Match them up. Lay one down on top of the other. And it's a near perfect fit. I say near perfect fit because despite my best efforts, I've never had it match up exactly. So that's probably another good reason to give yourself a little extra room on the pattern, especially when you transfer this over to the blanket, so that you can make up for any small errors and measurements by cutting off the extra material at the end of the project. So that's basically how this works. Hopefully you'll be able to see how that thumb is standing up there. And in order to make, well, this would be a left hand mitten. Actually, this will be a right hand mitten because when we assemble the mitts, we assemble them inside out. We do all the sewing inside out. Then we reverse the mitt. So even though this looks like it's a left hand mitten now, when we're finished sewing this, it'll be a right hand mitten. So how do we make the other side? We just cut two more pieces out, flip them over, fold them the other way, and they become the other side. All right, so what happens next? Now that we have our three, if I can get these lined up again. Now that we have our three pieces, we're going to take these and place them on our blanket, mark them, cut out the pieces of blanket. So let me spread the blanket out, lay these down, and I'll show you what we're gonna do then. All right, it occurs to me that uh, it probably would have been much smarter had I used a either, a either a darker pattern or a darker blanket so you could see some contrast. Hopefully you'll be able to see these three pieces against the blanket because they're pretty close to being the same color. All right, so this is just a bit of a kind of a puzzle fit. Decide where in the blanket you want to line up your pieces to sew them. And you know, maybe you want to line them up so that you don't waste too much of the blanket so that you can use another portion of it later. So figure it out. There's no magic to this. I think I'll start and work this way across the blanket. Now for this, I am going to use my Sharpie pen because of course the pencil or even a regular pen won't show up well. Okay. Just tracing around the outside. There's one of those. Now I'm going to need two of those. I may as well, I think I'll work this way across the blanket. I may as well draw the second one while I'm at it. I'm working right to the outside edge of the blanket just to save a little bit of material. Oops. So I just went a little bit off the pattern a little bit, but that's okay because that's going to be cut away from the blanket. So I have two of those now. Now, I'm going to cut, trace out two of each of number two and number three. I guess I can start with number two. But this is where things may be different for you, depending on if your blanket is the same color on both sides. So, I made it easy on myself. My blanket is beige on both sides, but if you happen to have one that has two colors or maybe a pattern on one side and not on the other, then it will be important that you flip number two and number three for the second mitten so that when you put it together, you'll have the same colors inside and of course when it's reversed, same colors outside. Again, if you're working with just a simple color one like this, then it's not too bad. I guess it makes sense to trace number three. What I'm gonna do is just continue off camera to trace out the pieces of the mitten. I'll cut them out and then I'll bring it back. Okay, blanket cutting complete. So I have two of the number one piece, two of the number two piece, and two pieces of another number three piece. I'm just gonna take those and set those aside for now because before we assemble a bit, and I just wanna talk about a few options that you may want to consider in the design of your mittens. And before I even do that, I'm thinking you may be like I was when I was first making my first pair of mittens, and this is actually only my third pair that I've made, but when I was making my first pair of mittens, I was quite nervous about cutting into the wool blanket and making a mistake. Would the design work out in the end?
Well, a couple of options just to make sure you're comfortable with how the design is working out. One is you could, as I did with the cardboard pattern, cover or trace it onto paper and then staple it, the mitten together into its rough shape. I mean, it's not functional in any means, but it will give you an idea. You'll be able to slide your hand inside and see if you have enough space inside the mitten. That would be one option, very cheap. Another one is to take some very inexpensive material and make a mitten from the pattern. So this one is starting to fall apart, pardon me. It's literally, it's not even barbecue cover material. It's a very, very light material. Uh, some type of a, a bag, I'm not even sure what it came from now, but it provided me the opportunity of trying the pattern out before I transferred onto a wool blanket. And as you can see, it fits wonderfully. Now, like I said, the stitching's coming apart, but I only put this together just for test purposes. So basically, this is the pattern of mitten that we're making today, and you can see how it worked out well. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention, I did kind of mention it, but it didn't tell you how to go about it, was if you want to turn the mitten into more of a gauntlet rather than just something that ends at your wrist, then you could, at the point where your wrist measures, wherever you lay it down, say right here, you could extend the pattern out at an angle, kind of a funnel angle, for as long as you want it to be, and that will give you a much bigger opening that you'll be able to slide your whole hand down into and have it come up higher on your forearm if that's what you want to do. That's one option. Now another option would be to, well, if you have some, let's say, raincoat material, an old raincoat that you want to cut up, or some nice nylon that you want to use, you could make a hybrid mitten where you use parts of the wool blanket and parts of the mitten, or sorry, of the nylon to construct your mitten. You can do that, you, such as if you want the back of it to be all nylon, then by all means do so. Maybe you've got some thin deer skin or some other nice thin leather from an old leather coat that you want to take apart, and you want to put that on the inside of the palm to give you some strength in there, you can do that. If you wanted to, you could make two identical mittens, one slightly larger than the other, and have it so that this mitten would go inside of the other, kind of like a gauntlet. Now, I've got a pair of gauntlets here that I've had for, I'd say a million years, but it's more like only 30 years. And these are gauntlets, I used to wear them when I was running long distances. They're a cheap Gore-Tex type material, and I would wear just a pair of thin uh, Poly Pro liners inside of them. But they will provide me something that I can use while I'm out in the woods and keep my wool mittens dry. Well, at least they're not waterproof by any means, these gauntlets are, aren't, but uh, they, they're functional. You can make a pair of gauntlets of your own like this from any type of a waterproof material by simply just upsizing the pattern ever so slightly to allow for some room inside when you're finished for the wool blanket mitten to go in. Another option would be, I'm noticing that this wool blanket, I'll just bring one piece over, it's, it's, it's pretty good, it's not bad, but it's not real, real thick. It's not as thick as, say, a nice pair of felted mittens. You could just as easily double up all your layers, or just the back layer, or just the inside layer, or whatever you want to do, to get some extra thickness to the wool mittens, the blanket mittens, if you want to do it that way. Personally, I think these will be just fine, and I'll be able to slide them inside the gauntlets and take them on and off. I like it because it gives me the option of having the, a nice breathable wool blanket liner that if it becomes wet, still will maintain some warmth and will dry out quickly once it's separated from the liner. All right, there's a couple of options. By the way, here's a pair of uh, wool, military wool liner gloves that I use uh, as well. So I've allowed myself some space to use those inside of the mittens. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about as I demonstrate how this goes together. And that would be how we're going to cinch the cuff at the wrist. So I'm just going to mock up. I'm not even going to pin it together at this point. I just want you to see what it would look like once it's put together before we take it to the sewing machine. All right, a little bit of, there's my seam allowance being folded up right here. So you get a, a, just a rough idea of what the mitten's gonna look like as we sew it, and I'll show you how to sew it together in a second. But when all is said and done, and you've got your hand inside the mitt, you want to have it so that it can gather around your wrist to keep the mitten from falling off. 
as well as to keep the cold air out. So I'm going to show you a couple of options because now is the time to consider how you want to do that so that you can move on to the next step with this already in place. So what have I got? Well, I'm going to show you, I think, three options. I'm just going to start with maybe even four options. I'm just going to start with the gauntlet to start with. You can see that inside the gauntlet, right at the wrist, at the factory, there was sewn in some elasticized material. I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. There's the elasticized material. Uh, to be honest, that's beyond my skill to do. I had considered a number of what I considered complicated ways of doing that, such as taking a piece of grogain ribbon sewn around the outside to create a channel, run some elasticized cord through and then tying it off with either a cord lock or a knot or something to do the same thing. If you feel you have the skill level to do that, by all means do so. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to use for this pair of mittens. It'll be easier. Another one would be a simple, simple Velcro strip. So the loop side gets sewn down to the mitten and then a piece of the hook side gets sewn onto the edge of the mitten and when your hand is inside, well I can demonstrate that of course, all you have to do is grab and pull it over folding material inside and it's nice and snug around your wrist. So that is probably the simplest method of tightening up the mittens. Another method will be something I'm going to use on a different pair of mittens. These are binding straps that you can get uh, most hardware stores. They have a guided loop where you can run it through and if this was a cable inside of it or something or a blanket or anything else you would bring it over and then of course it would velcro down. Um, to use these, I would cut off a short portion right about here, so that in one side of the back of the mitten, like that, you could go right around the mitten, but what I would do on the other side is sew it down so that let's see if I can do this correctly, like that. You could, like I said, go right around the mitten, but the idea is to be able to feed it through, pull the mitten as snug as you want to around the wrist and the Velcro would hold it down. So not unlike the gauntlet that I showed you a minute ago. So what I'm going to use for this project is something I picked up at the dollar store for $2 at, at uh, Dollarama, the dollar store we have here in Halifax. And these are sleeping bag straps, at least that's what they call them. And let's see, they still have the pins in them. Oh, this one doesn't good. All right. So it's just a nylon strap and it has a locking buckle at the top. There's actually a little guide here, like a keeper as well. And what I'll be doing with this project, there's a, yes, there's a lot of material here, but I'll cut it and show you before I uh, sew it onto the mitten. This is the type that you can run the strap up through the uh, slider, back through the other side, you can pull it as snug as you need to in this direction. In order to loosen it, you just lift the tab and pull it backwards. And out it comes. The question is, is can you manipulate it with mittens on? So this is the reason, that's part of the reason why I wanted to use this is because the portion that will be left dangling, I'm going to create just a small loop and tab that I can grab onto because all I'll be using, of course, is just the thumb and uh, well, my hands and my fingers, but it'll be inside the mitten to reach across and pull it tight. So I think this will work out. It's a very inexpensive addition. It's not the only option. As I showed you, there were a few options. But uh, now it is time to assemble the mittens. But the first thing I need to do is to decide where I want my wrist gathering, whatever device you're going to use, where that's going to be. So let me just set it up and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. All right, folks, this is just a little bit embarrassing, but I didn't realize until I got to the editing phase of this video that I had failed to turn the microphone on for a couple of segments. So what I'm going to have to do is just give you a voiceover and describe what it is I'm trying to accomplish. In this first segment, you'll see that I'm trying to show you where I put the straps that are going to tighten the mitten around the wrist. So having sewn on the adjusting straps, the tightening straps around the wrist, it's important to remember which one is going to be your right and which one is going to be your left. So for my mittens, the buckle has to go on the same side as the thumb for that hand. So I'll be marking this mitten left on the inside and the second one right on the inside. Later, when I go to assemble the mittens, I'll know which one is which. 
So here I have brought out the two palm pieces from my right and my left and I'll be sewing them together along the points indicated so that we can then assemble it to the back portion. So here, having assembled the two palm pieces together, I'm going to set them on top of the back piece, but you'll note that the buckle is on the inside here. And that's because, remember of course, that everything is inside out. The buckle will become on the outside once we reverse it. So this, in fact, is going to be my left hand mitten, even though at this point it looks like a right hand mitten. So still working with my left hand mitten, I'm going to show you the order or the sequence for sewing it on the sewing machine. So having lined up, we're going to start at one edge of the mitten near the wrist, come around to the thumb. We're then going to jump around the thumb and do that last portion. All right, there we go. There are the completed mittens still inside out. We're going to turn them it right side out in one second. Just a few things that I want to point out before I do. Now, first off is, depending on how uh, experienced you are at using your sewing machine, it will determine how close maybe you are to get to the edges. You can see here I veered off a little bit from the edge. I could at this point take the scissors and just trim that in to bring it a little closer to the stitch line. Don't get too close to the stitch line. You don't want the material unraveling and opening up a hole. Another thing I want to point out, this is probably the hardest part of sewing up the mittens and that is right here where the two thumb pieces meet the back, right in this corner. I'll try to get up nice and close. You'll see there's a little excess thread right there, right in that point right there. And that's caused by the fact that when you're running the sewing machine down, you have to stop flip the mitten, go around it, and start up again. It's very hard to close that hole up with the sewing machine. So what I'll do, and I would recommend you do, is just go old school, get a needle and thread, and just sew that little point closed right there. You don't want that to be a point of stress that will start to open up as you wear your mittens. Okay, so the mittens are now completely finished. One other thing I'll say before we turn them right side out is when you've Put your hands inside the mittens, the completed mittens, and if you decide that these are a little bit too big, this is what the opportunity you have to uh, change the side. Now, what I would recommend that if you find that the mitten is just too wide, work up the side opposite of the thumb and around, and you can just bring the mitten in a little tighter this way. It's harder, but not impossible to go around the thumb and do the same thing there. Uh, one thing I think may have happened in my measurements, I may have the thumb too long, we'll see in a minute. But other than that, all right, let's turn one of these inside out and see how it looks. So I like to push the thumb through first if I can. Good. Then the rest of the mitten. All right. You can see right here what I mentioned about that little gap, so I will be sewing that up afterwards. Okay, I'm actually quite pleased with this. You can see how it tightened at the wrist, and I can loose it back off, tighten it up to keep the mitten on. Yeah, there's a... Uh... All right, I'm quite happy with that. There's a little bit of extra room right here in the palm. I probably could have done a little adjustment to it, but functionally these mittens are complete. I have lots of room inside and they're staying on my hand. I think there's enough room I can actually wear a pair of gloves inside of them as well. If there was anything I was going to do differently for this mitten, if I was to do it again, is maybe make the thumb just a little wider when when I draw it on. It's not too small, but I wouldn't want it any smaller than it is right now. Okay. Completed project. Let's wrap this video up. All right, there they are. Finished project. Completed wool mittens. I'm actually quite happy with how these turned out. There may be a, things, a few things I'll do to them yet. One of the things I've discovered is I had made a little tab on the end of the strap that allowed me to pull it tight while I'm you know, putting the mittens on and cinching them up. It's a little difficult, I expected it might be, a little difficult using a mitten to pull that strap. So I may add something to the end of it, such as a ring or a piece of paracord or something that makes it a little easier to grab onto and pull it tight. 
taking them off is no problem. They loosen right up easy enough. So the, yes, it, it looked like they worked out pretty good. I did try these. These will fit inside of the gauntlets, but as I mentioned, if you don't have a pair of gauntlets that you want to wear over your wool mittens, easy enough to make it. Use the same pattern, just upsize it slightly and make it from a waterproof or at least a water resistant material and you'll have a pair of gauntlets that you can wear right over top of your mittens. Okay, that's two projects that I have done now with that wool blanket. There's still enough material for a few more projects. So I have a couple more ideas that I want to turn into videos for you, but I'd ask you now if there's anything you'd like to see me do with that wool blanket then put it in the comments section below if there's any comments you want to make on these mittens how i could improve upon them or done them differently put those in the comments below below so that we can share it with everybody but until i come up with that next video get out and explore and take that path less travel it'll make all the difference bye for now